23 years ago, Cassie Eckhart was born. When she, well, when she was born, her parents were so happy to have her. She's an only child, and they were happy to have a beautiful, healthy baby girl. But when Cassie turned seven years old, she tripped and fell in a supermarket, and it was just a child falling. It wasn't a big deal. But she noticed a few weeks later she had bruising on the right side of her ribs, and it was kind of painful. So they went to the doctor, and they gave her a sling to put her arm in to heal the ribs because the doctor was like, oh, you probably have a couple of cracked ribs. No big deal. Um, but a few more weeks later, she had some red race bumps on her face and on her neck, and they knew something was wrong. And she also got um, bumps along her back that were filled with fluid that the doctors drained. They didn't know what they were. They just decided to drain it. She went through a lot of doctors trying to decide what, what it was that she had. And finally, um, a family friend came up to them and said, she might have this disease called FOP, which is fibrodysplasia ossicans progressiva, which is really complicated, or FOP. And so they did a lot of research on it, and they talked to the doctor, and the doctor said, yes, I do think you have FOP. Um, I met Cassie seven years ago when I moved here. Her aunt is a very good family friend of mine, and her aunt is at my house probably three times a week, and we exchange Christmas gifts with Cassie's family. I text her and talk to her a lot. So I've been able to see her progress in this disease. Today, I'm going to talk to you about what FOP is, what it does to the body, and what kind of treatments are available. So, what is it? FOP is a progressive bone disease. Basically, short and simple, the patients who have FOP grow a second skeleton. All of their organs, ligaments, tissues, muscles slowly turn to bone over their life. When they're born, they look just like everybody else, no problems, except for a pretty uniform malformation of the big toe, which is one of the sure ways that they have FOP. There's actually a story of um, a boy who was born with the toes looking like that, and the parents went around to doctors asking what it was, and they said, you have FOP, which now they're able to take more, I guess you could say, abrasive actions so that he doesn't trigger any flare-ups, which I'll talk about in a second. It's extremely rare. It's one in two million people have it, and there's only 700 cases worldwide, and there's 185 cases in the U.S., which is pretty amazing that you'll ever hear about it in the first place, because 185, that's less than my entire senior class. And we have two girls who have FOP here on the coast. I'm not sure if you've heard of them. Cassia Cart lives in Napomo, in, excuse me, Lompoc, and Stephanie Snow lives in Santa Maria. So that's the toes. Um, so that's why I have a shoe because the toes bring, the toes are what is the key to knowing if somebody has FOP. No diet or exercise can change it. If you're born with it, you have it. This, these are some pictures of a man who has it. This was him by age 20 and how his restricted his movement had become. That was him when he was a child. He looked, he looked pretty normal. This was him at age 13. Cassie actually has a similar stance to him. She is kind of hunched over. She cannot turn her neck when she turns. She turns her whole torso. Basically, the patient's bodies turn to bone. And eventually, because of all the bones, they have to choose if they're sitting or laying down the rest of their lives because they will lock in that position. By the age of 40, this is what he looked like. This is his skeleton. And you can see how ribbons of bone are over here, just coming across how much extra bone growth he has. Um, and also another thing about Cassie, right now she's having a lot of difficulty breathing. She can't get enough oxygen because her rib cage is becoming completely encased in bone. And so she can't fully expand her lungs. So I was going to ask her to come in, but if she gets sick, there's a very high chance she could die. This man actually died from pneumonia. And you're probably all thinking, wow, this is a really horrible disease. Is there anything that's possible? There are no treatments at all or cures. If you're born with it, you're born with it, and you will die early. 
they actually found <laughs> the gene that causes FOP in 2006. Dr. Frederick Kaplan found it. And in, Phil, in his research center in Philadelphia, he is the top leading expert for FOP and has dedicated his research to finding the cure. And he found that it is one letter in our six billion letters that make up our DNA, our genetic code, that causes this condition. So there are no treatments, there are no cures. The only thing they can do is prevent flare-ups. And a flare-up is when they could, for Cassie, her original flare-up was triggered by falling. And that's what kind of caused it for her. Um, the body has a signal that says, oh, time to reproduce bone. But for FOP patients, that switch never turns back off. They keep reproducing it. So um, Cassie really wanted me to share this with you, that sh the more people that know about this disease, the more research they can do, because they actually do a lot of fundraisers. They do barbecues and banquets. And actually have, this was at the banquet. That's Cassie. That's her now. You can see her stance. And that's her mom and her grandma. Um, they have these um, silent auctions she painted a picture for. They have these things to raise money for research for FOP to find the cure. Um, that's one of the barbecues. That's Cassie. And that's Dr. Kaplan, who apparently he likes helping serve the needs, she said. Um, he's seen over 500 patients. So now that we know what FOP is, what it does, and that there are no treatments, now I hope you can all go out and try to help this rare disease find a cure.